and what does it mean for us in our roles as, as decision makers and leaders within, within IT? Well, we can probably all point to, within our organization, some early successes around the connected device, connected things space. For Coca-Cola, we had the Share a Coke campaign where you went onto a website, you could put in your name, boom, a bottle appeared with your label on it. You could then have that bottle, the real physical bottle, delivered to your house. You know, I'm sure some of you, or maybe those of you with children, were in, you know, in the stores, turning all the bottles around, trying to find the one that had your name on it, maybe, or the one that you could use to give to somebody that could you know, make a little bit of a joke. That was a very early and quite successful marketing campaign that involved linking the digital world to the product, early IoT. Up here, we have our freestyle machines. These are, those of you who don't know, a freestyle machine allows you to choose your blend of flavors. So you can say, I'll have a Coke Zero with lemon and strawberry and no caffeine. And it makes the drink live for you. What you can also do is download the mobile app and then the mobile app talks to the machine um, via beacons. So when you get there, recognizes you. This is, this is very new, says hello. And, um, and, then, and then offers you your own personalized recipes that you created and stored in the app. So probably most of the people in this room are sort of sitting here thinking, yeah, why would anyone want to do that? That was certainly my reaction. <laughs> Hugely popular with teenagers. They really, really like this. So in the, we're deployed in Burger King in the UK and Five Guys, and the, the feedback we get from our customers is incredibly positive, that people, it becomes a destination for the, for the teenagers because of the machine. So that's great for us because we're helping our customers. It's great for our customers because they're you know, selling more, more stuff, people are dwelling longer. So it's a good story all around. So good early successes with IoT. I just need to digress a little bit and explain the Coca-Cola system. So Coca-Cola operates a franchise model. I sit within the core of the company. We manufacture the syrups, the concentrates that go, in, that go to make our drinks. Um, and we then sell those concentrates to our bottlers. And our bottlers <coughs> add water, sweeteners, sugar, that kind of stuff, carbon, um, CO2, stick it in a bottle or a can or whatever. Anyway. It's a big system. Our bottlers are independent franchises. And these are billion dollar companies. Okay? They also own a lot of our cold drink equipment. So if you go to your local convenience store and you open a Coca-Cola branded fridge, that would be owned by one of our bottlers. Okay? Just remember that thought. They also do a lot of our distribution, so they own the trucks. So. When we think about IoT, lots and lots of vendors, fast pace of change, and then I combine it with a system where at best I can influence. I can't dictate, I can't order, I can only influence. Then how do you leverage assets as opportunities? Because those are, for all of us, the, the initial opportunity in the IoT space. Your company will own assets in some shape or form. Generally, there will be exceptions, but your company, if it, certainly if it deals in any kind of physical product, will, will have assets. So for us, that means the cold drink equipment that I was talking about, whether that's the fountain in McDonald's, whether that's the fridge in your local convenience store, it's our fleet, it's all of these things. It's our customers themselves. Sorry, that was the other point I should have made about the systems. So if you drink one of our products, we consider you to be a consumer. Our customers are Tesco, our Odeon, our McDonald's. Those are the people we actually sell product to who then sell it on to you. So just, uh, the only reason I say that is because I'm gonna switch between consumers and customers a little bit, so just to be clear on the terminology. Here I'm talking about customers. So if I talk about uh, Tesco's, Tesco's installs beacons in their stores because they want to enhance the retail experience of their consumers, our consumers too. So that then becomes an asset for me. How do I influence a customer to let me piggyback in their environments? And we've, we've done this with uh, SeaWorld in Florida. SeaWorld has an app. So if you go to SeaWorld in Florida, there's a mobile app. You download it onto your phone. It has a map of the resort. We've installed beacons, and SeaWorld have allowed us to put a little bit of software inside their app, an, an SDK effectively. 
and we can now, first off, look at how people move around the park in an anonymized way. Right? We, we, we don't collect personal information because we don't need to. We would love to, but there's too many ethical considerations and we don't need to. But we can see how people are moving around. And we can see if somebody's kind of dwelling in a particular area but not buying any product. Or we can see that people spend two hours in this part of the park and we don't have a, a Coke outlet there. So we can start to make commercial decisions which will benefit our customer based on the fact that they've let us into their, their asset effectively. Scale does become an issue. Uh, we found very, very quickly um, all sorts of scale issues emerging. We, uh, if we talk about beacons again, we bought and deployed within the system a couple of hundred thousand beacons in the UK to uh, enhance our coolers so that we can start doing some, some supply chain, well, sort of maintenance, sort of, you know, sort of some stuff around maintenance in terms of temperature, because if the temperature drops, you know that the cooler's got a problem, maybe the door's been left open or maybe it's broken. Plus, we're sort of experimenting with out of stock. So we deployed all of these things at scale, um, and then we deployed a new protocol that a certain large technology company have come up with for beacons, and suddenly all our beacons' battery life drained away. <laughs> Um, because this, uh, the way, probably the way, rather than the product itself, probably the way we install it. But anyway, the, the point being, we're operating at scale, and so suddenly you're discovering stuff that's wrecking, you know, 20, that wasn't all of the beacons, but a huge number of beacons that then have to go out and have the batteries replaced. The point, though, the really important point, is you have an opportunity in your business already when it comes to the IoT, and that is the assets you already have, and that should be a focus. So this is me and my problem. I've got a very complex system, right? That's all of these independent companies. Very complex. Lots of decision makers who I can only influence. They're aligned strategically. We all want to sell more Cokes, but they're not necessarily aligned at all operationally or tactically, which means that when it comes to system decisions, stuff like that, it gets very problematic. And then we've got this space that is jammed with vendors. I can't remember who it was, but somebody, I think it was the Acer presentation, put up one of those, um, those crazy maps the, uh, with the 50 billion vendors on there. I, I can't remember what they're called. But, you know, I, I, I considered putting one in myself. And if you look up the IoT vendors, you get these crazy, they've had lingua maps or something, and they're just like zillions of vendors. So... That's a real problem. That's the emerging technology space. It's the, it's the Betamax VHS problem times by a very large factor. Because, of course, whatever decision you make is going to involve some kind of investment. Right? And you don't want to be making the Betamax investment necessarily. And there's some conclusions that we can draw and some things that we're doing in Coca-Cola to avoid that. The other thing is the risk of shadow IT. We talked about this at dinner last night and... Um, Shadow IT is a really interesting one. I don't know that shadow IT is ever going away, and I'm not 100% convinced that I'm too concerned about that. For me, I think the point's been made a couple of times about security. So there needs to be a framework around security, that things are secure, that we're not exposing consumer data or confidential company data to anybody. But beyond that, do I want to have a little bit of flexibility to allow innovation to take place in areas outside of IT? Yeah, probably, is my view. But it's, it's risky, and it needs to be managed very carefully. It's almost inevitable in this space, though. I, uh, I got contacted by our marketing team a couple of days ago um, because they want to send beacons out to all of our marketing leads globally with an app that we've sort of, they've sort of had developed outside of the, uh, the normal scheme of things. So just pure shadow IT. My first inclination as a seasoned IT person was to uh, you know, slam the governance on them with gusto. I resisted the urge. We, uh, we got it security scanned, and we're going to go ahead with this deployment because we think that the value of having the marketing, the, our digital marketers, excited enough about a thing called, about a beacon that they actually went off and did this means it's probably worthwhile and because they're in marketing they've packaged it up really nicely so we think it might actually work <laughs> so approach break up 
IoT into manageable chunks is my first piece of advice. You know, if you're talking about real-time proximity marketing in a store versus optimizing your supply chain, your trucks, routes, all of the things that IoT is capable of doing, these are different, different beasts which require different solutions. So I would strongly encourage you not to try and boil the ocean on this, but to, to select a couple of areas. 